What's up, everybody? How we doing? Woo! So exciting to be here. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, we have some exciting stuff to show you. Uh, yeah. Uh, how many of y'all are here from out of town? All right. Wow. All right. How many? How about from outside of this country? Wow. wow. Amazing. Well, I'm so, so for, for the live stream, that's about like 50, 60 percent of people here. Amazing. Yeah. I'm so glad y'all could make it. We have some really fun stuff coming up, so excited everyone could be here. Uh, also, it happens to be the, a new year in Ethiopia and Eritrea, so for those watching from there, happy new year. Uh, and I'm, you know, before we get into it, I want to sh uh, share a quick video here. I'm going to play this from a different keynote, a speaker far more accomplished than, than we are, but it was the you know, it's computer science department head of MIT. This is a speech from 1999. You know, over 25 years ago, um, it was the 35th anniversary of this of the lab of computer science there, and it's just an amazing talk. I want to play the clip for you. Kind of sets the tone for the rest of the talk, and and we'll be right back. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no reason we can't talk about the future while having a little fun. So let me recollect something for you. Last year, a few of my colleagues and I. We're heading to Taiwan. The flight, as you know, is very long. And in the airplane, I was trying to make something work. Now, that something was a laptop, brand new laptop, the latest. It was running Windows. <laughs> and a little card on which you download your software, you download your addresses, you download your calendar, and then you take the card in your pocket. I had been at it for three hours. And my problem was that when the card software was happy, the operating system wasn't, and vice versa, as you well know. So we're in the plane. So I turn to one of my colleagues, and I say, Tim, would you please help me? Well, Tim Berners-Lee is a very gracious man. So he said, of course. He, th he said, I think I can help you. So he picked up the machine. An hour and a half later, he hands it back to me, still very polite, still very British, says, I'm sorry, I can't make this thing work. <laughs> so I turn to my friend and associate director, Ron Rivest, and I say, the inventor of the web couldn't do it. How about you, inventor of RSA? <laughs> and Ron, with his characteristic wisdom, looked at me and said, no, Mike, thanks. <laughs> and then the youngest member of our delegation, whose name I shall not mention to protect the innocent, jumped up and he says to me, you guys are a bunch of old fogies. Let me show you. <laughs> Good LCS attitude. Two hours later, he hands it to me with expletives surrounding this. <laughs> I went to my seat and I did what every expert does. I tried the various wizards and lizards that were coming up at me. And I kept typing at random things in the fields until finally, three hours later, it worked. Total elapsed time, nine hours. <laughs> Good point for those who make batteries. Now, ladies and gentlemen, why do I bring this up? Our field is young, so I don't bring it up to complain so much. This is to be expected. But we are at a junction. What I experienced with that example is typical of what we have done for the last 40 years with our field. We have focused on designing for machines. We put little envelopes. We call them operating systems. We call them browsers. We call them network software. And then we throw all this stuff at the user. Now, the image that this evokes to me is a user, you, sitting in your car, a car that's very early vintage. And you got rings in every finger. And on every ring is attached a wire. And you got a wire for fuel mixture. You got another wire for advance of the ignition. You got another one for the valve clearances, the brakes, and this and that. And you're sitting there with all these wires. And we say to you, go from Boston to New York. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this must stop. Uh, so by the way, this is a video that does not like have millions of views. It's 900 views on YouTube, so it's a deep cut. You're welcome. 
Um, but I love it because it shows you, it tells you about the importance of the user experience in a very relatable way. I love that example of, of the fingers controlling a car. And if you look at the experience of building apps today, and how many people here have actually written code to ship apps? Okay, about half of the people in the crowd. So I'll tell you a personal story. I think Alex and I, uh, and another co-founder of ours from our last startup, we'd been building an app. This was like, um, maybe like 9 a.m. I started my day at a public library. This is pre-COVID, still working out of coffee shops and libraries. And I wanted to launch a feature, so I was building a screen. I think it took me maybe an hour, so pre flutterflow days. <laughs> and I tried to run it, and it wouldn't start. Uh, the phone would just restart. As soon as I hit run, the phone restarts. Okay, I'll, you know, wizards and lizards, you know, try different things, operating system version, check the phone version. Eventually, like four hours later, I realized if you turn off the Wi-Fi, just because of the version of the framework and the phone and the operating system, that's actually a bug. If you turn off Wi-Fi, it works. So okay, no problem. It reported to GitHub, answer the Stack Overflow question, move on with life. And it didn't really hit me that I shouldn't be spending four or five hours not working on the product. And that's, what we, um, that's why we exist. Our goal is so that building products feels like that, that you're sitting in a place that you, looks beautiful, you're having a good time, you're working on the product to serve your customers. That's what we're about, and that's why we do this. Yeah. Uh, and, we'll, and Alex will tell you about the journey so yeah. far. So I just want to tell you a little bit about our journey. So for those who don't know, we got started in November of 2020, uh, posting about Flutterflow to a Flutter community page with nothing but a landing page. So we were definitely a no-code company because at the time we had written literally no code. Uh, but somehow we woke up to over 800 signups on our waiting list. And that was the first time we knew that we were really building something that people truly wanted. So we spent the next month, which we called No Sleep November, uh, building out, working hard to build our very first product, in, product and inviting our very first brave souls to try it some of whom have since forgiven us for this uh, initial experience. Uh, but luckily, our early users were extremely patient as we built fast and broke things. And some even went above and beyond in giving us incredibly passionate and detailed feedback that allowed our product to advance. We've also had the good fortune of having the support of the Flutter team throughout and even launched publicly in May 2021 on Flutter's Google I.O. keynote. So I want to give a huge thank you to the Flutter team and the amazing Flutter community for everything they've done and all the hard work that they've done. Now, in the subsequent two years, we've continued to advance the product and have even started working with larger and larger companies to help build their user-facing applications, uh, showing that both individual developers, freelancers, and major corporations all face the same challenges when it comes to application development. Now, flash forward to the present. We now have over 750,000 builders building on Flutterflow, who have collectively generated over 1 billion lines of Flutter code. <laughs> on top of that, over 12,000 Flutterflow applications have been deployed to the app stores directly from Flutterflow. But more important than any of these numbers is you all. Our amazing, passionate community is what truly makes Flutterflow, Flutterflow. And you guys inspire us to improve every single day. So I want to thank each and every one of you, whether you're here in person or watching at home, for being with us on this journey. And our promise to you is that we're going to work as hard as we can to deliver you a platform that you deserve. Because we want to change the world, but it's actually not us who can do it. Because you're the ones who are doing the real work out there. You're, it's the founders that are building a diabetes management app, to the freelancers that are building an app for their local business, or the developers that are driving transformation in their companies. You're the ones we want to support, and we want to, you know, we're going to cheer you on as much as we can. Uh, and it's a privilege to be able to do that for you. Uh, speaking of you know, working hard, uh, we actually have the Flutterflow team here who you know, works hard every day to deliver this platform for you. So if you please stand up, Flutterflow team here. There's also some in the back. Uh, 
Sung joining us live. <laughs> this uh, part was not planned. <laughs> Yeah, so speaking of hard work, uh, we're excited to announce today a new release of Flutterflow 4.0. 